so we can see the truth as truth and have the courage and the strength to follow it and so that we can see falsehood as falsehood and have the courage and the strength to abandon it forgive our mistakes and shortcomings and guide the tongues by which you speak the hearts by which we feel, the intellects by which we comprehend. And help us fulfill each one needs and heal the sick and enrich our souls of knowledge of you and protect us, protect us from our own ego, from the shaitan and from being heedless of you. Help us to be conscious of your merciful, loving presence. And to remember you in every intention, in every action, in every word we speak. Ameen, ameen. Bisr al-Fatiha. A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعبد عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Inshallah, I will need someone's help. Maybe Brother Muhammad, can you uh, type what I type? <laughs> type it for the Zoom okay. class. Yeah, because we are going to talk today about like uh, I know an anatomy, but special anatomy to the human being. We talked yesterday about the body. That is the uh, realm of the, you know, forms, diverse forms, and the forms have meanings. So if we just live with the forms, we feel the separation, as we talked yesterday, we feel uh, the, the we're just indulging with something that is really keep fleeting as we talk. But when we expand our perception, we feel the oneness with everything. That we are part of this and they are part of us. And we talked a little bit also about, so that is the level of a, what we call it nafs al-ammar. Nafs al-Ammara, it has to progress from fleeting pleasure to sustainable wellness, which depends on what is everlasting. and not perishable, right? We talked about that yesterday. Then we have the realm of the heart, which is the realm of feeling. And the heart in Arabic means qalb, it means it turns. So you turn towards things you desire, we talked about that yesterday, and we talked about uh, the attachment you form with loved ones or with certain things that you desire and you attach to it physically. But you can turn that to spiritual. As we talked, that desire, you have to look for the underneath need, the real need. So you, for example, your 
afraid that tomorrow you will not find provision, so you're looking for a job, or you will become poor, so you're looking for a job. That's called desire. You're desiring job. Of course, there is many complex factors why you are looking for a job, but that is the desire that you associate to the world, to the realm of the physical. But underneath it, there is need for provision, for sustainability, for security. So the actual need is legitimate. But we seek it only separated from the spiritual that created the pain we feel when that is, does not happen or is lost. So when we turn towards Allah with that desire and attach it to Allah rather than the worldly, attach it to the spiritual need, not the worldly desire, then the transformation happens. We have a deep understanding why we're desiring that thing. And then we can find the many acceptable counters in finite ways to have that. Even if the worldly one does not happen our way, it might happen another way because Allah has the infinite possibilities. So our goal is to turn towards Allah, turn the heart towards Allah. And that's why in, in this level, you can feel that uh, this is this is particularly the blaming self. Nafs <coughs> al-lawam. Uh, Al-Amara is the commanding ego. Of course, they are all connected and one. Just for the sake of understanding ourselves, we do these names. So, here's the blaming self, Nafs al Everything is from Allah. It can be anything in the world that is not from Allah? No. So this blaming self is something, a gift, a beautiful gift giving to us from Allah. Because without blame, I can offend you and be cruel to you and feel nothing. <laughs> so I can do whatever I want to do to others. But because of these concerns, because of this feeling of blame, did I do the right thing? I think I heard that person. I feel guilty. So this problem is a good thing. Or I'm in an abusive relation, and someone is abusing me. Does Islam or Sufism wants us to be abused? No. Allah gives every soul dignity, and uh, every soul is holy. So by also, the blaming self can help recognize when abuse happens. Because like, you start to say, he shouldn't belittle me this way. He should not have beat me or hit me that way. So that is uh, part of our innate nature to recognize these things. But sometimes we get it covered up. We get stuck in it or cover it up. So I cover my guilt when I offend someone because I want to have the control. I think that will make me secure. I think that will get me the pleasure that I want, but it's a false illusion. It will never do. Or I am in an abused relation, and I continue to say, well, I have to surrender. I have to be gentle and loving, and I'm afraid if I leave that person, how I'm going to survive without that person? This is also illusion. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the Quran, if you live under abuse, whether in a relationship or in a country, you will be asked, why Allah, earth is spacious, the Quran says. Why he didn't migrate? So why he didn't migrate? He will ask us, except if you're truly helpless. Boor has no means to travel, women, elder, sick person, then Allah will not blame you, of course, uh, because you can't do these steps. But if you have the capacity to do these steps, you're asked to do it. So it's our illusion that we want to rely on something finite or someone to get us the solution. So we blame the ruler. We blame this or that. We don't want to take responsibility because it needs hard work. But Allah wants us to take that hard work. If we're capable, we're not sick, we're not elder, we're not, we have 
beings. Allah give us faculty, He give us creativity, He gave the spacious earth. So He gave us the resources. Are we using it the proper way? No, we want to stay in the status quo. Passive. And that is passive. We, f we become passive aggressive sometimes. So, and these are not the right ways that will help us to foster the godly attributes or cultivate the godly attributes that Allah wants us to know and to represent on earth. So, blame is good, but when you get stuck in it, and you start to blame everyone except yourself. You blame the world, you blame the government, the ruler, you blame the husband or the wife, you blame the parent. And we stuck in it, we keep blaming, blaming. Then it is not the purpose, it is was given for a beautiful purpose, to recognize things and to take actions. But to just be the blaming self all the time, it will not help. So we are called in the Sufi past to walk the walk and to grow out of that. And it's liberating. Out to grow out of that stuck place is a liberation. So that's what we're asking to do. And when you are turning to Allah, then Allah will provide you with the creativity, with the patience, with the strength and the courage and all the qualities you need to embody it so you can deal with a situation like that. Sometimes also we start to uh, act, but not from the right place, embodying these beautiful qualities, but from a place of, uh, uh, for, the, for an egoistic purpose. But as we talked yesterday, when you are full of the love for the creation of Allah, even when you are in this tension and these conflicts, you can still hold in that love and act from that place of love for the wellness, having the wellness of the other person in consideration. So you will be considerate for the other person. Then we, after that, we can move for, to the nafs al-mulhama, which you can say the the mind or the individual soul, individual consciousness. Which is discreet. But this soul sometimes refer to the dark because at that level, even though you are inspired to understand, you're inspired to do the right thing, you're limited still. You're limited because the mind is limited by what it has accumulated. This is different than the intellect, or what CT calls the white mind, or I translate it as the pure consciousness, or pure rationality. Here, in that stage of the dark mind, or the, uh, what we call the dark mind, or the individual perception, that is based on what you accumulated so far. The data you accumulated in your memory from the, what you take from the world, it is your past, past experiences. So you learn things, teachers taught you things, parents taught you things. You had painful situations that made you uh, grow in fear or insecurity or things. So this is accumulated past habits that we start to form and pattern of behavior will start to form. It also have uh, the culture. You grow in America, someone grow in Africa, someone in Europe or a special country in Africa. So you grew up in this culture, these norms, social norms, that uh, social taboos, things like that. So you accumulated this as you grew up naturally and you thought, okay, that is the only way. This is where tribalism starts to happen because it's my way, it's our nation way, our religion way. So people from, from religion start to rub against one another. Uh, people uh, from different nations because it is nation nationality now. That's tribalism. 
in the past, they lived in small tribes, and we call it tribeless. Now we're big nations, but we still sometimes behave the same way. So this nation is the hostile nation, this nation should be the friends for our lie. This uh, nation is, is so foreigner, they dress weird and they look weird. This nation, they, they value uh, freedom, and we're afraid of freedom. So all of this starts to happen on the individual level, on the community level, on the national level. And that is most of the, our problems as individual and the world comes from there. But it has some glimpses of insight because at this level, we take also the wisdom of our culture. In each culture, there is wise people who give the wisdom, the right spiritual path to people. But sometimes it's taking superficially, or we just take the outer appearance of it and forget the spirit, the wisdom, the meaning behind it. And sometimes there are scholars, there are people who, who start to interpret it or explain it. So we say, oh, now we understand, it makes sense. That is why we grew doing this and this, because it has this wisdom behind it. It has this uh, knowledge behind it. So we start to accept it on a, on, a ra on a rational way. And so we are inspired at this level. We're inspired to join community to belong to. We are inspired to do what is good. We are inspired to understand. Our mind starts to grow and wants to work. And so this is uh, a nafsil al-mulhama, the inspired soul. And this kind of teaching to grow up, you know, it has its beauty and goodness. It's not all horrible. Because every culture, again, has this wisdom that is inherited. And you need to just verify it. You form, at this point, you form beliefs. But beliefs are different than existential experience. You're just believing something because you grew up in it. You have not yet lived it, its wisdom behind it, and you also inherited wrong norms of it, and you're holding on that belief, you're afraid to let it go, because you're taught that something is, you're not anymore patriotic, you're not any more religious, you're not this or that. So you're afraid to let go of some concepts, misconceptions, because this is how you grew. But with some glimpses of inspiration that I want to understand why I'm facing this problem, why I'm suffering, what is right and wrong, why we're going to war with this nation. So these questions start to form, which are good thing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This doubt, these questions, this community started to become better. It's a, it's a, to move us in the better direction. So it is like you are a child and growing in understanding and in knowing the truth. So you are progressing towards the truth, but you can easily get stuck also as you get stuck in this. As we finish then, you will also learn that those are fluctuations. You can say, oh, I arrived at the civil station, so now I, am, I know it all. Life will hit you with a new experience right away. Because that's a continuous strife. That's the jihad, the inner jihad, the greatest jihad inside us. Because you will fluctuate between this. Once you understand something, there is a new thing that you need to understand. There is a new experience you need to deal with. And that continues. But when it continues with some knowledge, real based knowledge and methodology, then it becomes a little easier then to meet the new challenges, to meet the new hardships, and to progress. So uh, after Nafsul Mulhama, Nafsul Mutma'inna. So you reach to the intellect. The intellect. So, first of all, we have.
have to progress from beliefs in this uh, dark mind level, from beliefs to verifying these beliefs, whether it is right or wrong, with existing, existential experience. So we need to verify this with ex existential experience to see if it is right or wrong, to see it for ourselves, to realize the truth, so we can actualize that truth in our life. So the, nafs, uh, the, the next level is the intellect or the nafs, the content self, the secure self. It goes beyond the blame why. Because you're not anymore afraid that people will say you're not patriotic, you're not nationalist, you're not religious enough. You're forsaking your heritage, you're forsaking your family, and you hear these things, but now you are in a better secure place that I want to find the truth for myself. And this is an, a Quranic notion, because in the Quran people will say, we found our forefathers following this and we're following it just in their footsteps. The Quran asks it, what if they were wrong? What if they didn't know the truth? You need to know the truth for yourself. You will be asked individually. You will bear the consequences individual, in the individual level. We think, but you know, if you do the right thing as individual, then you will feel that contentment and security. Even if there is chaotic, because you can't control the rest of the world. You can only do your part. But that little part, if each one starts to do their little part, then the change and the transformation in the world will happen. So, at this level, we need to uh, free ourselves. It's, a, it's a liberating, because now you want to seek the truth for yourself to know it and to actualize it, and to be its representative. So you get rid of the fear and the prejudice also. You're not anymore having prejudice. You, you are using your full rational capacity, or at least a great part of it, because we always have to strive for more. But you're trying to use what God given you as a gift, rationality. But rationality alone also has its limitations. Because not everything can be just logically known and done. Because Allah wants to reveal himself. So we will not worship the intellect. We will not worship the self. So he, OK, logically, let us talk physical and scientific first as an example. Uh, antibiotic treats bacteria. We discovered that. It's a great knowledge. It's a real knowledge. It works. But then at one point it defies. At one point bacteria starts to form resistance. Why? Because we will confuse the antibiotic. We will worship almost, not like we will do rituals to it. But in our mind we worship it as idol. We make an idol of it. That it is the healer. The antibiotic becomes the healer. Only Allah is the healer. So Allah, generosity and bounty continue to give. But he wants us to know him and to continue to receive from him the new inspiration, the new knowledge. And it is fascinating, it's exciting, because you're always looking for uh, this new, boring knowledge. Before they didn't know the antibiotic, they did other things. It worked, or it may not work, so they started to look for something else. So eventually, you have to continue in be increased in knowledge, which you have to know the knower, Allah. You have to recognize that most of these things, anyway, is God giving gifts. There is 30, 33% to 50% of scientific discoveries are what they call coincident. It is not coincident. It's Allah wanted to show that He rewards the researcher, but unexpected, to show that it is Him who giving the gifts. It is not your effort. He likes to see you trying, because you're supposed to. But then he gifts you with something unexpectedly to, sh to show that he's the one who's revealing the truth. 
So we should not worship the intellect. The intellect is limited. It's limited also not only in the physical level when we deal with disease or any other discoveries, but it's limited when we deal emotionally with things. If we only use our mind void of feeling for others, then we also go wrong. Peacemakers and specialist psychologists have found in research that when they do peacemaking, based on logic alone, neglecting people's emotions, they may agree at the spot, because it makes sense. But after that, the emotion takes over and the peace is not sustainable. To, to have a sustainable peace, you need to address the emotion and take it into consideration. You can't just act rationally. And so you can also, in, in your dealing, you may act very logically and you don't reach the results you, you need. Because there is more, more to the soul, more to the feeling. You have to include all of God given faculties. You have to turn to the giver, to the knower, and then you will feel this wholesome and he will lead you in every step. But usually we live fragmented. We live only as worshipping the intellect or worshipping our feeling. Make idols of it and we stuck with it and it takes over us. Whether it's a thought, a concept or logic that we feel is logical, which our logic is, is limited anyway. There is a lot we don't know. We know only a tiny bit. For many times we, we thought the atom is such and such logical and we know how to use things in the world, but we want, when scientists wanted to really know, it eludes them. It continues to elude them. They can't find the tiny particle from which the universe is, is made. So the physical universe is made. So uh, the intellect has definitely its limitation. And so many people, when it comes to faith and religions, they want to apply the intellect first. I mean, that will not work. There is the existential experience. And when you experience it, when you experience the presence of Allah with your heart and soul and your whole being and your other inmost secret levels of consciousness, there is no words that can describe it. But people who reach it that, they are the most rational. We call them the wise. They have rational explanation for everything. It doesn't defy rationality. Religion does not. But if you try to reach it first, rational, it might defy you, it might elude you. Just as the word, it eludes you if you only seek it intellectually. That's why sometimes they say you have to be in the heart, not the mind, or to be in both. Actually, I would say, you have to reach that inmost secret inside you. That is, has no word to describe. And with your whole being being in the experience, then the feeling would come, the right feeling with it, which is definitely peace and fulfillment and ecstasy, and also with the sensual pleasure to it. Then, so you're a whole. <laughs> but then, uh, rationality will start to, you will start to find, oh, now I understand, you know. But, and that journey continues because there is always new experiences and so forth. So that is uh, the content that is secure now in being not affected with the other below level, not stuck. At least it knows there is a liberating way. It's working on it, it's accepting it. And if you are integrated self in Sanil Kamil, if you are in the integrated self, then you will have the pure rationality that comes with it. But in Sanil Kamil, it's not like a perfect one because again, life continues to go on. The uh, possibility of erring becomes less. But it doesn't mean that he's absolutely perfect because he's just a human. He might do the, some minor mistakes, some mistakes still, because he always in need of Allah's mercy and forgiveness, as we, we say. Otherwise, it's a very tempting, uh, also difficult place.